Okay, welcome to part two. Uh, Thomas, please go ahead. Yeah. Um. Okay. So. Right. So. So. So to recap, uh, both in the Grassmannian case, um, and in the um toric case, there is a positive part of these spaces. The positive part is a real semi-algebraic thing. It's a topological space. This topological space has a face poset, and the face poset matches. In the Grassmannian case, the positive toric stratification, and in the toric case, it matches the torus orbit closure stratification. Um, and and this analogy is pretty potent. So there's a lot of things that are in parallel. Um, I wrote down what the top form is on the Grassmannian, um, but I think I, I think I won't explain this um, formula. Uh, let me go on to talk about coordinate rings. Um, I'll, I'll come back to this analogy uh, between the toric case and the positive toric case. Maybe I should have done this first, just um, since this is more an analogy with Schubert uh, geometry than with uh, toric geometry. Um, so uh, if you look at the if you look at the homogeneous coordinate ring of a Schubert variety, which you can define to be this uh, um, this ring, which is you take global sections of uh, these various line bundles, various twists of um, on the Schubert variety, um, then you get uh, you get this homogeneous coordinate ring of the Schubert variety, and these uh, these vector spaces, the global sections of a line bundle on a Schubert variety, they are things called Damasur modules. Um, there's a similar description of the coordinate ring of a positroid variety. It's the um, uh, it's uh, Again, what you do is you take uh, this line bundle O of D and you uh, look at the global global sections sections along the positroid variety, and um, and I call uh, I call these uh, things cyclic Damasur modules, um, and um, up to a dual, they're basically defined um, in this way. Um, I, actually, this is this is not a hard theorem at all. Um, is that you can take uh you can take a bunch of Damasur modules and then and then appropriately rotate them. So this chi here, this chi here is cyclic rotation. So it's it's uh whatever the map is on these global sections induced by taking um uh induced by the action of uh of uh um uh on the underlying vector space c to the n. On the underlying vector space, there's a cyclic rotation that takes the basis vector EI to EI plus one. And that uh isn't well, that that is an element of GLN, and that will uh that will um uh that will act on these uh global sections. Um and um uh if you if you sort of intersect uh intersect N of these uh Damasur modules, then you get something called the cyclic Damasur module. Um and this thing is quite uh uh, this thing is quite interesting because it has a it has a crystal basis um like the um like well well like sort of irreducible representations of GLN and also like Damasur modules have uh have canonical bases and crystal bases so does so does this intersection um you can show that this rotation is compatible with um with these uh constructions um, so this this was also studied by Lakshmi Bai and Littleman, um, and and studied from a different perspective in this uh, recent work of um, Amosa, Gao, and Huang um, from a Grobner basis perspective. I think uh, um, something that I've been wanting for a while but have sort of made no traction on is the question of what is the character of of uh, this cyclic Damasur module, for example. What is the dimension of the space of global sections of a line bundle on a positive variety? Can I find a formula for that? And we know there are nice formula in the case if instead of positive variety, if I put Grassmannian, then there's this wild character formula, wild dimension formula. Um, in the case of Damasur module, um, there's a Damasur character formula for this, a recursive formula that computes uh, uh, what the character of this uh, thing is as a T module. Um, same same thing. I would like to know what the character of this is as a T module. And, um, as far as I know, not, nothing is known about this this question. It doesn't seem to be an easy. At least as far as I know, there doesn't. Um, there's no easy way to get it from something that's known. 
Now there's another coordinate ring to look at. Um, so this was coordinate ring of a closed positroid variety. You can also look at a, a coordinate ring of an open positroid variety. And uh, a couple of years ago with Galashian, we proved that um, the coordinate ring of an open positroid variety is a cluster algebra. So, so the open positroid variety, so the closed positroid variety is irreducible, normal CM. Open positroid variety, it's, it's not um, projective, it's smooth and affine. So the properties are a little bit different. Um, so you don't need to take homogeneous coordinate rings. You can just take its coordinate ring. And um, this open positive variety is just spec of a cluster algebra. Um, this cluster algebra has been around since the work of Posnikov, um, but the, but it took a while. And, and there's here a bunch of uh, references. Um, now, before we uh, eventually prove that it, um, it was a cluster algebra. Um, and, and actually, this is a little... Uh, it, it's a weak analogy, but it is a sort of an analogy with the toric case. In the toric case, um, the the strata are tori, and tori are very very simple cluster um, cluster varieties. Um, and something that I thought uh, would um, uh, I I really underestimated when I when I um, when I was working on this problem was I thought oh. Um, uh, Surely this, uh, surely this result that the um, coordinate ring of the open positive variety is a cluster algebra means the coordinate ring of the closed positive variety is also a cluster variety by somehow um, uh, sort of deprojectivizing in some particular way. In in the way that uh, um, Scott presented the um, uh, homogeneous coordinate ring of the Grassmannian as a cluster algebra, it also showed that the top open positive variety was a cluster algebra as well. So there were two things being shown there. Um, a little bit surprising is I think I think it is still not known whether the homogeneous coordinate ring of a positive variety, which is this thing that I'm talking about here, the thing whose is a graded ring whose uh, uh, graded pieces are these cyclic Demazur modules. I don't know whether that is a cluster variety. Um, and has something to do with, uh, obviously these two guys are related by, I mean, these two rings uh, are related by some kind of localizing. Um, here, here we have to invert a bunch of um, Pluka coordinates. Um, um, uh, but it, it seems a little bit surprising to me, and maybe maybe I'm wrong and it's really easy, uh, that, that uh, there's some, um, that there's some obstruction to easily proving that uh, you can get rid of uh, you can get rid of the things that you invert, and it's just it's still cluster. Okay, yeah. So I I won't say much about about this. Um, let me move on to. Um, I want to try to state um, one of the mirror symmetry statements for the Grassmannian, um, and the sense of mirror symmetry that. I'll be talking about is the sense due to given tau. I, I mean, there's a lot of work on mirror symmetry. Um, and uh, given tau popularized the point of view where you're allowed to pair a um, Fano variety, not, not a Calabi Yau, as in initially in mirror symmetry, but a Fano variety with something which is supposed to be mirror to something else. And that something else is not a Fano variety. It's, so it's, it's not mirror to the same kind of thing. Um, it's mirror to something called a Landau-Ginsberg model. Um, so uh, the, so in the mirror symmetry statement for the Grassmannian that I want to talk about is that the Grassmannian is mirror due to the open positroid variety and a potential. Um, so, so this thing just to spell it out. So this is the the dense open uh, dense open positroid. So there's one positroid variety which is dense in the Grassmannian. So that's the top one. Um, so that's what this notation is. Um, and um, so it's mirror not just to the open positive variety, but the open positive variety equipped with a potential. Um, a, this potential is going to be a, an, a holomorphic function on the open positive variety, um, and it will be a rational function on the Grassmannian. And the formula for it, um, so there's a number of different ways to write it. Um, the formula, the way I've written it is due to Martian reach. Um, this uh, this uh, potential looks like this in terms of Pluka coordinates. So uh, in the denominator are the cyclic minors, so the minors, uh, um, the Pluka coordinates labeled by i up to i plus k minus one, and uh, and then you change one of the uh, 
you you swap out you swap out one of the indices to make one of the things in the um, numerator. Uh, it, it won't be important for us, but in there, there is a Q here. If you um, there's a quantum parameter somewhere in this potential. Okay, so what is the statement of mirror symmetry? So when you say this sentence that the Grassmannian is mirror due to this, what is the statement? So I. Uh, I wanted to find a version of mirror symmetry where the statement is sort of in the spirit of all the things I've talked about so far. So here is the statement. The, the statement is that um, on one side, we just take the cohomology of the Grassmannian. And on the other side, uh, we take uh, the twisted uh, cohomology of um, the open positroid variety. Um, so what is, what is this thing here? Yes, first you take... Um, uh, algebraic forms on the open positroid variety, which means the um, algebraic DRAM complex of the open positroid variety. So remember this open positroid variety, um, it, it's a special case of one of these things. So, so its coordinate ring is just this cluster algebra. So we're just taking the um, Kähler, the module of Kähler differentials um, um, of that ring. Um, but instead of using the usual uh, derivative, we use uh, this twisted uh, um, differential and so so the usual algebraic DRAM complex would just be would just be this part of the definition. So you just take you just take the um, uh, forms uh, 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 forms on the open positive variety algebraic forms and just take the usual exterior derivative. Um, now um, the extra information of this potential, we what we're asked to do is to take is to twist it. Um, so instead of taking the derivative to be d. We twist it by um, uh, also doing df wedge. So this df wedge, so df is going to be a one form, and df wedge uh, will do the same thing as d. So d will will take a zero form into a one form, a one form into the two form, and so on. df wedge will take a zero form into one form, one form into two form, and so on. So it 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 goes from the right pieces in the in the Dirac complex. And so the mirror symmetry uh, mirror symmetry statement is that. Um, if you take the cohomology of the algebraic DRAM co complex twisted, uh, twisting the differential in this way, then it's isomorphic to the cohomology of the Grassmannian. Um, let me say, let me say, uh, uh, clarify this even a little bit more. Um, so the right hand side should be somewhat familiar. So the left hand side is the sort of foreign object. Um, this this left hand side uh, is a complex, and it turns out the the complex. So without taking cohomology yet, this complex only has cohomology in one degree. It only has degree. It only has cohomology in the top degree, and in that degree, the cohomology group has dimension n choose k, which is the which is the um, dimension of the cohomology of the Grassmannian. So that's one of the statements of the a, a consequence of the mirror theorem for the Grassmannian is that this weird thing that you define from the positroid, open positroid variety, um, it has cohomology just in one degree and the dimension is equal to the, this, this number and choose K. Um, the, yeah, so let, let me emphasize again that, I mean, this, this right-hand side is familiar and this left-hand side is not, that this left-hand side is a purely algebraic construction. So now that we know that the, um, coordinate ring of the open positive variety is a cluster algebra. Um, that's a ring. Um, and, and if we think we understand that ring, then we can apply um, just algebraic constructions to build the um, algebraic DRAM complex from that ring and compute this. Um, that's not how the proof goes, but I'm saying uh, in principle, this left-hand side is some purely ring, the like ring theoretic gadget. Um, uh, the open problem is, uh, and people have looked at this uh, for a while now, and I, I think uh, still we're not very far here, is that uh, what if instead of doing the top um, uh, piece, we so I said Grassmannian is mirror due to the top positive variety with this particular potential. Um, the conjecture is that the open, the closed positive variety should be mirror due to 
I think the open fossil troy variety with some potential. Um, and uh, and and therefore there should be some um uh, what what this mirror duality statement should say is something analogous to this. So it should say that the cohomology of a closed positive troy variety is isomorphic to the twisted, twisted um uh Dirac cohomology of the open positive troy variety with respect to some potential. Um, this potential should have a shape that's not too different to this. So um, in the mirror symmetry world, um, this uh, particular form of the potential, um, uh, actually each, um, each term in here is supposed to correspond to one of the boundary divisors. So, so actually there's a bijection between um, these terms in the potential and the positroid divisors in the Grossmannian. Um, so, so if we understand the positroid geometry well enough, we should try to guess what this F is for a positroid variety. And, and this is a place where the, I think the analogy with the toric case is very potent. Um, so uh, uh, the, one of the test cases for given tau uh, final variety conjecture is if you take a final um, toric variety, then it's mirror due to, um, what is a mirror due to? Is a mirror due to just a Laurent polynomial. So it's mirror due to a superpotential on a torus. And one way to think about this torus is that this torus is sitting inside a toric variety. You know, uh, may, maybe a mirror due toric variety, um, not the same one, but this is a dense torus. This is one of the, the dense torus orbits. And then on it, the superpotential will be some, um, uh, some Laurent polynomial. There is a uh, question is, in the chat. Yes, pi f final. Yes, I think I, I would call it. Um, I would call it final. So the uh, the 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 anti-canonical divisor is is the class of the union of the posit of the positroid divisors inside that positroid variety, um, and that's uh, uh, effective. Okay. Okay. So um, uh, so finally, I want to I want to end by talking a little bit about the topology of these uh, positroid varieties, and and so I can compare to Schubert cells, and it's a little bit boring. So I want to focus on the topology of the open positroid varieties. If I compare to the Schubert cells, the Schubert cells are boring. They're contractible. They're just affine spaces. So there's no interesting topology in the Schubert cell, but there is interesting topology in the Schubert variety. Um, uh, however, if I look at the open strata, then um, I could also compare to the toric case. And there it's not contractible because it's a torus, um, but it's it's still a little bit boring. So the um, uh, it turns out that the um, uh, cohomology uh, um, cohomologies of these open positive varieties turn out to be pretty interesting. Um, so as I said, the smooth affine complex uh, varieties. Um, uh, and uh, uh, and it's got a mixed hot structure. And um, the mixed hot structure of uh, an open positroid variety is uh, it's not um, uh, it's not pure, but it's it's not um, it's satisfies some condition that it's mixed tate or hodge tate. Um, which makes it a little bit a little bit nicer. Um, so uh, so the mixed hot structure of Deline so endows uh, endows the um, cohomology of a particular cohomology group, say the cave cohomology group of a complex variety with some additional filtrations. Um, for simplicity, I'm going to think of it as something called a Deline splitting. So it's just a direct sum. Uh, it just uh, it's a direct sum over p comma q of um, some additional pieces. Um, and uh, when and, and in the mixed tate or Hodge tate case, um, these pieces are uh, non-zero only when p is equal to q. So then then what you get is basically a bigrading. So I'm just going to think of a mixed Hodge structure as a bigrading. 
of the of the cohomology. So an additional uh, grading. So uh, a relatively recent uh, theorem of mine and Galashian is, um, is that we can calculate uh, the mixed Hodge polynomial of this top positroid variety. Um, uh, and it turns out to be a sort of familiar familiar um, polynomial. So as I said, um, in general, the mixed Hodge structure gives you sort of the three indices K, P, and Q. But in the mixed Tater Hodge take case, there's only two uh, indices. And um, I'm not going to write down the exact definition because there's a lot of indices to remember. But it, you get a bi-grading. So you're going to end up the get a bi-grade. The mixed Hodge polynomial is going to have a, a two-variable polynomial. Um, and uh, it's a little bit more uh, elegant to state the result when you mod out by the free torus action. So there's a there's a torus sitting inside PGLN that acts on the columns of this K by N matrix, um, acts on Grismanian. Um, if you mod out by this torus, then then you, uh, it, this torus acts freely. Uh, it turns out on the on this open positroid variety. If you mod out by it, then um, then the mixed Hodge polynomial is just this QT Catalan number. So uh, a pretty well studied um, two variable polynomial that generalize that um, um, so so if we forget the two variables, so we just plug in one, then we just get the Catalan number back. Um, so, um, a consequence of this theorem is that the Euler characteristic of the space is just the Catalan number. So it has this really elegant, simple formula, um, one over n times n choose k. Um, and uh, this is, I, I, I mean, this is relatively uh, new stuff. So I, we've known this for two or three years now um, uh, with Pasha. Uh, and, and we're still thinking about, we're still thinking about how, um, how this works. So it, in some ways, it's still a bit mysterious to us. Um, but it does show that this uh, this open positive variety is is has topology that's extremely interesting. Its Euler characteristic is a Catalan number, so it's a very nice nice number. One um one feature of this is this uh, this generating function only has positive signs, and that reflects the I mean it, it's in the conventions of mixed Hodge polynomial, but basically it reflects the fact that this this space only has even cohomology, and this is something that uh, I think one of the immediate open problems in this is um, why is it that this particular uh, positive variety, when I mod out by torus, I get something that has only even cohomology. Um, so it, it doesn't have it doesn't have a uh, uh, um, stratification into cell even cells. Um, it doesn't have a, so it's not it's not like the Grassmannian is not a projective thing with a bunch of um, affine with an affine paving. Um, but its cohomology is even, um, and uh, and the open problem is uh, for which positroids is it true that the cohomology is even after you mod out by the torus, um, and that's something that's been puzzling us for a couple of years now. Okay, I think I'll stop here. Uh, thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much for a great talk.